Parvas Sojourn presents the altruistic traveler's return to his native land of five rivers after 12 years to soon embark on another odyssey. It also rekindles memories of saints who practice the same spirituality as Guru Nanak. का भगवान से खुदा से सीधा कनेक्शन हो जाता है तो भेद भाव खत्म हो जाता है नानक साहब भी कलंदरी सिलसिले में तो कलंदर जो होता है वो तनाई पसंद होता है मस्त कलंदर मस्त कलंदर मस्त कलंदर हक अली एकोंकार सतनाम करता पुरख निर्भ निर्वैर अकार गुर पर साद Circumstances influence human temperament, just like the journey of the Earth around the Sun brings changes in seasons. Guru Nanak says, through introspection, we can reap the benefits of circumstantial learning. From Chittorgarh, Guru Nanak and Pahi Mardana traveled northwards to Ajmer. पुष्कर मथुरा दिल्ली, पानीपत तख्तपुरा सुल्तानपुर लोधी पट्टी गविंडी जामन डेरा चाहल एंड रीच ननकाना साहिब फ्रॉम चित्तौड़गढ़ दे फर्स्ट ट्रैवल टू अजमेर Tracing Guru Nanak's footsteps, we travel from Chittorgarh to Ajmer. The city of Ajmer in the state of Rajasthan in India is built around the Anna Sagar Lake. Surrounded by the Arabali Hills, the city of Ajmer, known for the shrine of the mystic Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti, is popularly known as the gateway to Pushkar. We pay a visit to Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti's mausoleum at the foot of the Taragarh Hill. Born in 
Born in Zistan in Iran, the 12th century Sufi saint Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti settled in Ajmer. He is credited for introducing the Chisti order in India. The Chisti practice is notable for Sama, which entails evoking the presence of the Divine through music in the form of Kavali. Baba Sheikh Farid Chakkar Ganj of Pak Patan whose verses were collated by Guru Nanak and later enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scripture, was amongst the noted disciples of Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti. Baba Farid had spent considerable time in devotion at this shrine. A memorial is built here in his memory. At this shrine, Guru Nanak met with Alauddin and Sagrasuddin, the disciples of Khwaja Moinuddin Chisti. They discussed the mandate of the Islamic clergy to perform the five prayers as an obligatory daily adherence. In reply, Guru Nanak sang, Soi ka ji आप तजे एक नाम किया आधार हो ओ हैप्पी हो सी जाए ना जासी सचा सिरजन हारो पंच वक्त निवाज गुजारे पढ़े कते बे कुराना Prayers are intended to inspire the mind to seek beyond the mundane activities of existence. Guru Nanak says, a mere ritualistic recitation is futile unless the higher purpose of oneness is imbibed beyond the biases of gender, religion and status. From Ajmer, Guru Nanak and Pahim Mardana crossed the Aravali hills to visit the nearby city of Pushkar. We visit Pushkar, the city which is acclaimed by Hindus as one of the Tirath Raj, the king of pilgrimage sites. Pushkar means a lotus flower, which is believed to be the seat of Brahma, one of the holy trinity of the Hindu gods worshipped as the creator of the universe. The famous Pushkar Lake is surrounded by 52 ghats, the lakefront steps, where many temples are located. Thank you. 
one of the ghats is dedicated to Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Nanak. The Jagat Pita Brahma Mandir, located close to the Pushkar Lake, is said to be the only temple dedicated to Lord Brahma, one of the Hindu trinity gods, considered as the creator of the universe. We now visit the Pushkar Gurdwara. This Gurdwara in Pushkar stands as a memory of Guru Nanak's visit to the city of temples. Pushkar is not only known for pilgrimage, but is also famous for hosting one of India's largest camel and livestock fairs, known as Karthik Mela. The fair attracts a large number of tourists, apart from devotees and traders. Supna denotes a dream state in which a person is in a deep sleep, but the consciousness remains awake. Observing people performing a myriad of activities, I reflect on the conditioned state of mind, which subconsciously keeps performing mundane activities. Guru Nanak seeks to transcend to a state of conscious awareness. From Pushkar, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana travel to Mathura. In Guru Nanak's footsteps, we travel to Mathura. Mathura, a city in Uttar Pradesh, is situated on the banks of the river Yamuna. It is one of the Saptapuri, the seven cities considered holy by Hindus, as it is the birthplace of Lord Krishna. Being a place of religious importance, Mathura attracted congregations of spiritualists. Hence, Guru Nanak visited this city to interact with people. According to the Meherban Janam Sakhi, during the stay in Mathura, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana visited the Keshav Deva temple, dedicated to Lord Krishna's birth. We visit the Krishna Janamasthan temple complex, which was built in the year 1953 on the same location as the erstwhile historic Keshav Deva temple. The essential message of Lord Krishna's famous discourse, the Gita Sar, in the epic of Mahabharat, is to let go of attachments. This wisdom can be understood by regarding its characters as metaphors. Pandavas the five brothers represent the five human sensory organs which facilitate experiencing, studying, hearing, contemplating and discussing. This process is facilitated by a common factor, their consort, Draupadi, who represents faith, the opponents, Kauravas, the hundred brothers, represent multitude forms of ignorance which influence the mind. 
in the battleground, Krishna, the charioteer, guides the reins of the five horses which represent the five human senses. Krishna is represented as the all-knowing, all-existing, supreme self, the human consciousness which facilitates spiritual victory. Epics can have physiological insights into human nature when the layers of philosophical depth are explored and understood. Else, they remain mere symbolic religious texts. Since eternity, the core philosophies of all beliefs have the same deeper message. They get reformulated as times evolve. Guru Nanak reminds us that there are numerous epics, discussions and interpretations. However, wisdom cannot be attained through mere words. <laughs> Courses at the Keshav Deva temple, some Vaishnavite pilgrims, the followers of Lord Vishnu, asked Guru Nana what kind of services and methods are needed for the union with the Divine. In his response, Guru Nana sang. <laughs> Mindfulness is the ability to be aware of our actions and equipoise is the act of consciously balancing them. We can be too meek and lose courage to stand up for justice or can be too exacting and lack empathy. Guru Nanak says, Sahaj, a combination of mindfulness, equipoise, universal love and acceptance of the law of nature can be an effective way to unite with the divine. In the Mathura city, we visit Gurdwara Nanak Bagichi. In remembrance of Guru Nanak's dialogue with the Vaishnavites, Gurdwara Nanak Bagichi has been made close to the Keshav Deva temple. Visit the ghats, riverfront steps along the banks of the river Yamuna. Historically, these stepped ghats have attracted Hindu pilgrims who take a sacred bath in hope of absolution of their sins. At the ghats, some Shaivite natives, the followers of Lord Shiva, asked Guru Nanak about his social status and his religious mentor. In reply, Guru Nanak sang, Apne thakur ki haan cheri
चरण गहे जग जीवन प्रभ के हो मैं मार न गुरु नानक सेज सर्विस टू अदर्स इज हिज सोशल स्टेटस इन ह्यूमिलिटी He equates himself to a handmaiden who has given up herself in service of the omnipresent. He professes that his religious mentor is the wisdom which eradicates his ego. Enslavement is most commonly associated with physical bondage. Unfortunately, we overlook the slavery of the mind which is bound by attachments to identities and desires. We now visit a site on the banks of the river Yamuna which was established by the Udasin community. This Udasin Mat at Gauhat is the oldest site made in the memory of Guru Nanak's visit to Mathura. A local resident mentioned that the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scripture, was enshrined at this site till the political events of the 1980s. In present times, Guru Nanak is revered only as a memory of the past association with the Udasin tradition. From Mathura, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana travel to Delhi. Tracing Guru Nanak's footsteps, we visit Delhi. Delhi, the capital of India, is located on the banks of the Yamuna River. inhabited since 6th century there are varying accounts as to the origin of its name some historians say it is derived from the word dil meaning heart and some believe it came from the word dehlis meaning gateway symbolically an entry to the gangetic plain delhi the capital of india Witnessing various rulers has remained the center of governance for centuries. When Guru Nanak visited the city, it was under the rule of Sikandar Lodi, the Afghan king. We visit a locality on the banks of the river Yamuna, which was historically known as Majnu ka Tilla, literally meaning Majnu's mound It was named after the Iranian Sufi saint Fakir Abdullah who was known as Majnu the one who is lost in the beloved's love Na Majnu ka Tilla is built on a site where Guru Nanak had dialogues with a Sufi fakir. History mentions that Sikandar Lodi, the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate, was a man of polarities. He was known for being generous to charities, but was also intolerant of other religions. The Meherban Janam Sakhi mentions that during a congregation with Fakir Abdullah and other spiritualists Guru Nanak was asked about his opinion on the importance of charity and if giving alms in abundance was an entitlement of being a noble being in reply Guru Nanak sang Ande kamme 
It is a misconception that injustice can be overlooked by performing acts of charity. Guru Nanak says, For those who harbor discrimination, their noble deeds are akin to a dike, which cannot withhold the effects of raging floods. This philosophical message does not find mention in the Vilayatwali Janam Sakhi and Pai Mani Singh Janam Sakhi. These texts speak of a miraculous event in which Guru Nanak brought to life a dead elephant during his visit to Delhi. Such discrepancies in narratives force me to wonder whether with the passage of time we have drifted away from Guru Nanak's profound spiritual words analogies and metaphors eho man me gal kaha basi ale kaha base eho pavana kaha base so sabad audu ta ko chu ke मन का पवना एलिफेंट्स आर नोन टू हैव अ शार्प मेमोरी एडिंग अ कॉन्टेम्पलेटिव माइंड फॉर कॉग्नेटिव लर्निंग गुरु नानक सेज व्हेन द एट्रिब्यूट्स रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय द एलिफेंट माइंड सीज टू एग्जिस्ट इन ह्यूमन बीइंग्स दे कैन बी रिवाइव्ड बाय क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग द इवॉल्व्ड स्टेट ऑफ ह्यूमन कॉन्शियसनेस In my humble opinion the act of bringing alive an elephant is a metaphoric representation of this philosophical message Gurdwara Nanak Piao at a distance of about 8 kilometers from Gurdwara Majnu ka Tilla is another site dedicated to Guru Nanak's visit to Delhi. It is mentioned in Mahan Kosh written by the noted writer Kahan Singh Nabha that Guru Nanak quenched the thirst of travellers by giving water from a well at this site. In my humble opinion, This physical well is a metaphoric representation of a repository of wisdom which Guru Nanak imparted to quench the spiritual thirst of the people. From Delhi, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana travel to Panipat. Following Guru Nanak's footsteps, we travel to Panipat. Panipat is a historic city in the Indian state of Haryana. According to the epic Mahabharat, it was founded by the Pandava brothers. Famous as Weaver's city, it is strategically located on the Grand Trunk Road, a 3rd century trade and travel route which connects the Indian subcontinent to Central Asia. At 
पानीपत वी विजिट द श्राइन ऑफ बू अली कलंदर शेख शरफ उद्दीन अ फोर्टीन सेंचुरी मुस्लिम सेंट हु वॉज पॉपुलरली नोन एज शाह शरफ During the stay in Panipat, visited the shrine of Shah Sharaf, as it was a place of congregation for Sufi spiritualists. Sheikh Tahir, also known as Sheikh Idul Kabir, is referred as Sheikh Tatihar in the Janam Sakhi literature. On hearing Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana sing verses of profound wisdom, he welcomed them to the shrine. Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana interacted with Sheikh Tahir, the then spiritual head at the shrine of Bu Ali Shah Kalandar in Panipat. During the discourses, devotees of the shrine asked Guru Nanak about the attributes of a clear-hearted person. In reply, Guru Nanak sang, Sedak kar sajda मन कर मखसूद जेह तेरे देखा तेह तेरे मौजूद जेह तेरे देखा तेह तेरे मौजूद Guru Nanak says people of virtue have a vision beyond the realms of religious protocols for them the sajda bowing while praying represents the humble submission of the egoistic intellect thus allowing them to see the presence of one in all to so, nanak sahab ek sandesh leke nikle the jo logo ko jagah jagah sandesh diya pyar mohabbat ka bhai char कि बड़ों का आदर करो छोटों से मोहब्बत करिए गरीबों से मोहब्बत करो जिसका भगवान से खुदा से सीधा कनेक्शन हो जाता है तो उससे भेदभाव ख़त्म हो जाता है वो तो सबको एक मान सम्मान की तरफ से देखता है और सबको अपने गले से लगाता है नानक साहब भी कलंदरी सिलसिले में आते तो कलंदर जो होता है वो ज़्यादा लोगों को साथ नहीं रखता तरह पसंद होता है From Panipat, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana travel to Takhtpura in Punjab. We visit Takhtpura village, where stands a gurdwara in the memory of Guru Nanak's visit.
ਸ਼ਾਮ ਤੱਕ ਪੂਰਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਐਂਡ ਪਾਈ ਮਰਦਾਨਾ ਕ੍ਰਾਸ ਦਾ ਸਤਲਜ ਰਿਵਰ ਐਂਡ ਰੀਚ ਸੁਲਤਾਨਪੁਰ ਲੋਧੀ ਕ੍ਰੇਸਿੰਗ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕਸ ਫੁੱਟਸਟੈਪਸ ਵੀ ਟਰੈਵਲ ਟੂ ਸੁਲਤਾਨਪੁਰ ਲੋਧੀ meeting her brother after years baby nanki was delighted to see guru nanak beaming with spiritual radiance the people of sultanpur lodi were eager to meet guru nanak who had once served here as a modi an officer at the state granary they desired to hear from him about his travels and experiences while intermingling with diverse cultures and belief systems anticipating that guru nanak would have experienced the divine in places of worship they inquired as to its physical attributes in response guru nanak sang je ke ho hoe ਤਾਂ ਕਿਉਂ ਦਿਸੈ ਜਾਪ ਰੂਪ ਨਾ ਜਾਤ ਸਭ ਕਾਰਨ ਕਰਤਾ ਕਰੇ ਕਟ ਔ ਕਟ ਕਟ ਥਾਪ ਆਖਣ ਆਖਾਂ ਨਾਨ ਕਾ ਆਖ ਨ ਜਾਪਿਆ ਨਾ ਜਾਪਿਆ one tends to perceive matter mind and the consciousness as disconnected guru nanak however reinforces the concept that nirgun the invisible attributes and sargun the visible attributes are connected implying that divinity is essentially formless yet all pervading it is through conduct that one attains or distances one's self from divinity from sultanpur lodi we make a detour from guru nanak's trail to visit the village of sohal 30 to explore memories of bhagat sen a saint whose philosophy was aligned with that of guru nanak's are varying accounts about Bhagat Sen's place of birth. According to popular tradition, he is believed to have been born in 1390 AD at village Sohal 30 in a family of barber community who were considered as low caste. Bhagat Sen was a personification of selfless service. He diligently performed his duties as a personal attendant of a king during the day and devoted his nights in serving the spiritually minded and the needy. Bhagat Sen lived much before Guru Nanak. The two never met in person, but their thoughts overlapped. Both were advocates of monism. endorsed selfless service and rejected the caste system one of bhagat sen's verses is inscribed in the guru granth sahib the sixth scripture in it he expresses his devotional fervor and gratitude towards the all pervading provider mangala har mangala नित मंगल राजा राम राय को न 
नित मंगल राजा राम राय को मदन मूरत पार गोबिंद सैन पण पज परमानंद मंगलार Bhagat Sen finds supreme joy in unconditional service which is his form of worshiping the divine From Sultanpur Lodi Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana traveled further northwest and crossing the river Bias reached Patti After having made a detour to Sohal Thatti, we resume our journey in the footsteps of Guru Nanak from Sultanpur Lodi to Patti. A historical town located on the Indo-Pak border in the Majha region of the Indian state of Punjab. Patti was once a center of power and affluence. Yun Xiang, the 7th century Chinese traveler, mentions this city in his accounts. At Patti, observing farmers plowing their fields, Guru Nanak engaged in conversation, asking how they cultivate their soil to reap the harvest of solace. A farmer requested Guru Nanak to guide them. In response, गुरु नानक सैंग एहो तन तरती बीज करमा करो सलल अपाओ सारग पाणी मन किरसान हर हृदय जमाए ले पावस पद निर्बार बस मूड़े माया पित सुतो सगल कालत्र माता तेरे हो ना अंत सखाया द प्रोसेस ऑफ कल्टीवेटिंग क्रॉप्स इज अकिन टू पेविंग द पाथ टू स्पिरिचुअलिटी अ फार्मर स्टीप्ड विद फेथ इन जनरेटिंग अ हेल्दी प्रोड्यूस डिग्स डीप विद इन द अर्थ सीड्स इट विद विजडम एंड नरिशेस इट विद कंपैशन Guru Nanak gives the metaphor of farming to motivate individuals to imbibe a similar attitude to live a meaningful life. From Patti, we make a detour from Guru Nanak's footsteps to visit the nearby memorial of Baba Sheikh Brahm at the Indo-Pak border in Khemkaran. बिगड़ी मेरी बना ही दे मर मर के जी रहा हुए जीना मुझे सिखा बाबा शेख ब्रह्म ऑल्सो नोन एज शेख इब्राहिम वॉज द ट्वेल्थ सक्सेसर ऑफ बाबा शेख फरीद स्पिरिचुअल सीट मैं मंगता तेरी This is the mausoleum of Peer Baba Sheikh Ibrahim whom Guru Nanak had met at Pak Patan. Guru Nanak had spent time with Baba Sheikh Ibrahim at Pak Patan when he visited Baba Sheikh Farid's shrine on two occasions during his first and the third odysseys. It is through their association that Guru Nanak collated the verses of Baba Sheikh Farid 
which were later enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scripture. As a successor of Baba Sheikh for each spiritual seed, Baba Sheikh Brahm had spent his life at Pak Patan and passed on in East Punjab, the region which is now in India. The Radcliffe line demarcating the partition of 1947 decided the fate of two historic places. The birth and resting place of Guru Nanak became a part of Pakistan and the resting place of Sheikh Brahm a part of India, depriving access to devotees of the respective faiths. Baba Sheikh Brahm's tomb is maintained primarily by the Sikh and the Hindu community of Khemkaran. Located on the zero line, this site is open once a week, permitting access to Indian nationals. It is emotional to watch Pakistani devotees handing over their offerings to Pakistani rangers who pass them over the border fence to the Indian Border Security Force officers. From Patti, Guru Nanak and Pahim Mardana travel to Kavandi. In present times, due to political reasons, the India-Pakistan border can only be crossed at a few designated points. Hence, to retrace Guru Nanak's footsteps, we visit Pakistan through Vaga border and continue our journey from Kavandi. At Kavandi, we visit the only surviving tower of a Gurdwara which is said to have been built in the memory of Guru Nanak's visit to this region. In the book Gur Tirat Sangrah, written in 1884 by Tara Singh Narottam, he mentions the historical Gurdwara in Kavindi. The partition of 1947 divided the Indian subcontinent into two sovereign nations, India and Pakistan. This religion-based division decreased Guru Nanak's followers in Pakistan, which resulted in the dilapidation of many erstwhile sites built in Guru Nanak's memory. The elderly of the village Kavindi informed us that a sarovar, a water pond, had existed next to this Gurdwara building. It has now dried up and the land is being used for farming. From Kavindi, Guru Nanak and Pahimardana pass through Jaman village. Trailing Guru Nanak's footsteps, we visit Gurdwara Rori Sahib at Jaman village which is close to the Indo-Pak border in Pakistan. Pai Badhava Singh built this Gurdwara Rori Sahib in village Jhama. The noted writer Kahan Singh Nabha mentions in Mahan Kosh that during their visit to Jaman, Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana had spiritual interactions with Pai Nariya of the Bhabra Jain community of this village. Captivated by Guru Nanak's philosophy, some members of the Bhabra community became his adherents. Rori Sahib Gurdwara at Jaman, before the partition of 1947, was a frequented shrine with large tracts of land where community fairs were held twice a year. The Gurdwara is now deserted and the once huge sarovar, the water pond, has dried up. The Gurdwara's past grandeur can be observed from the remnants of the fresco artwork which depict inspirational moral folklore. 
it is interesting that the name rodi sahib of this gurdwara is the same as that of the gurdwara rodi sahib in amenabad from jhaman village guru nanak and pai mardana visited dera chahal village in the barki district tracing guru nanak's footsteps we visit the dera chahal gurdwara in the village of dera chahal Dera Chahal was Guru Nanak's maternal village. Bebe Nanki, Guru Nanak's sister was born in this village. Guru Nanak would often visit Dera Chahal. This gurdwara was built in the memory of Guru Nanak's visits and the birth of Bebe Nanki. It is said from his childhood days Guru Nanak often visited this village. as it was his maternal home the gurdwara was abandoned after the partition of the indian subcontinent in 1947 it was restored in the year 1997 with the initiative of malik miraj khalid the then acting prime minister of pakistan and himself a native of dera chahal village from dera chahal guru nanak and pai mardana headed to talwandi their hometown which is now known as nankana sahib in guru nanak's footsteps we travel from dera chahal to nankana sahib Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana were returning to Talwandi after having travelled for approximately 12 years. The pehli udasi, the first journey to the east and the south, which started in 1504 AD, is estimated to have concluded in the year 1516 AD, when Guru Nanak was about 47 years of age. Pai Mardana proceeded to visit his family and Guru Nanak met his family who were delighted to hear about his accomplishments Having spent time at Talwandi Guru Nanak was now planning to embark on another odyssey to the north Pai Mardana a true companion consented to remain a vital part of Guru Nanak's next physical and spiritual journey we perceive reality according to our mind's understanding allowing it to control our actions guru nanak says if we conquer ourselves then we can win over the entire world aaye panthi sagal jamati manji 